What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Boardroom Podcast, where we help you stay calm, change lives, and have business on your terms. I'm actually really excited because I get to bring on and now a good friend. Like we just kind of, I feel like we've known each other for a while now, <laughs> but it's been like only a few weeks. But that's what happens when there's like radical transparency and you're just open and you're just honest with how you communicate. So I want to introduce you guys to Josiah Novak. I want to make sure I spelled, said your name right. <laughs> <laughs> I will explain that callback a little bit later for those of you guys listening. <laughs> Just op- reopening up old wounds. But uh, Josiah is a, a guy that I have come to respect a ton. He's got a great, he's really embodies what it's like to kind of be successful on all fronts. So he's got business going. He's got a great relationship with his wife. He's got a couple of kids. He's in fantastic shape. He's got a strong faith, spiritual guy. And so he's somebody that I like the very few people that I actually open myself up to. He's somebody I can have a real conversation with. So I wanted to bring him on because he is a guy that is living the life that a lot of us entrepreneurs who are busy building a business, building something that we believe in. One of the things that we kind of lack oftentimes is our health. It's like the first thing that goes out the window. So having somebody who not only is actively building their business, but also is in great shape and is helping other entrepreneurs get in great shape as well, uh, ultimately ensuring that they're not sacrificing their health and their spirituality and their family life, all for the sake of building a business that is going to provide for the family that they say that they're doing it for, and ultimately sacrificing the thing that they want in the process. So Josiah wanted to kick it off to you and just kind of have you introduce yourself to the crew. You know, what do you do and how do you even get started? Wow. So I help. First of all, thanks for the intro, man. It was awesome. Um, Definitely not as good as yours. <laughs> no, you're great. Man. <laughs> I listened to Josiah's <laughs> intro for me and I'm like, man, like, bro, what the heck? Oh, wow, Give yourself some grace, man. Give yourself some grace. <laughs> Keep working. We'll get there. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you nailed it, man. You know, I first of all, it's humbling to hear all that, but you know, I think that what I do is really encapsulated in uh, the struggles that we go through as guys who truly want to have you know everything in order, and we oftentimes neglect ourselves, you know, yeah. in the process of chasing all the things that we're told we're supposed to chase, you know, and when we really break it down, there's two foundational pieces you know, that I think most guys are lacking. And we start with the one that is, in my opinion, the easier one to talk about, which is your fitness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to talk about fitness because everybody truly wants to look and feel and perform at their best. Anybody who says any different is lying and it's okay, right? We have to be, we're in a safe place. You can, you can say what you want and that is, Hey, I want to look good. And that's a natural and healthy thing. uh, I want to look good naked straight up. I'm like, yeah, I mean, why? It's, it's always like when someone says, I don't believe in God or I don't believe there's a God. I'm like, the only reason you say that is because there is a God, <laughs> right? So it's like, if you say, I don't care about looking good naked, I say, well, you're telling me that you don't want to look good naked. No, of course I do. Right. I mean, everybody does. So ultimately what it comes down to is most guys just can't see, you know, what's right in front of them, which is they're overqualified to be healthy and fit. You know, they have all the skills, man. They have the discipline, the work ethic. You're not lacking anything. You have to start looking at yourself in a different frame. You've just been directing your energy towards other things. Oftentimes it's business, family, you know, you're also directing your stress towards other things and you can direct it towards things that would be productive. So we have vices, you know, we have addictions. And the thing is you can just shift some of the energy around and all of a sudden you'll realize like, man, this doesn't require you know, brain surgery or to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. I just need a different system. Yeah. So I help guys do that. You know, I help guys, specifically the the high performing guys who have had a track record of success when it comes to, you know, their, their business or their career, right? Um, They have a track Mm -hmm. record with success with their family. They have beautiful family. They're doing well. People like these guys, but when these guys are in their private time and they're alone, they feel like, man, just frustrated, you know, like yeah. frustrated that I can't seem to look and feel and perform at my best. It's like they have everything else going on in other areas of their life, but they want their walking business card, if you will, like their body to reflect how sure. successful they are in other areas of, of their lives. Yeah. Right. And ultimately, like the two things in life that 
saved my life and continues to save my life. I mean, it's an ongoing thing, right? And I say save my life. I mean, literally in some instances, save my life and ultimately now save me from making some terrible, awful decisions. Also texting Iggy is another one that saves my life. <laughs> it's not annoying at all when I'm just texting him all my grief, but you know, ultimately there's the fitness side, right? So fitness isn't just about looking good. It is also about getting you mentally in a healthy place. You know, when you're taking care of your physical body, that's very much in relation to your mental state. You know, nobody mm -hmm. ever goes to the gym, has a great workout and walks out feeling like, you know, a bag of whatever, right? They're like, dude, I feel awesome. You know, I'm so glad I did that. So it gets you in a better mental space, helps you interact with people way healthier in your day to day, helps you make clearer decisions, um, helps you build confidence. So, you know, when you do make decisions, you're confident in who you are. Fitness is so much more than just abs, right? Yeah. It's so much more. But then the other side, you know, that a lot of people shy away from talking about, which I'm sure we can get into, is the faith side. You know, the faith is your spirituality, like, you know, who you who you are. You know, that's really like at the end of the day, part of why when guys have that calling to get in better shape, I say, don't ignore that, dude. Like that's spiritual, man. Like that's telling you, hey, like you're living in this body that isn't at its you know best capacity. It's not at its yeah. ultimate potential. You're leaving a lot on the table uh, when you don't take care of yourself. So yeah, there's uh, there's a whole synergy there, faith and fitness that work really hand in hand. And uh, I think a lot of guys uh, need to hear that. Yeah, I like that because it's funny when I had my fitness business, one of like the core things that we talked about is like the importance of it being like mind, body, and spirit, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, you have to, you have to incorporate some type of spirituality because it goes deeper than just the physical is like your soul, right? It's like, mm -hmm. what is your greater purpose, for what you're doing and attaching your health and your fitness towards like a greater, greater good, which is uh, if you're spiritual and you have like faith, it makes it very, it doesn't make it easy, but it, it does make it easier to really like have some deeper meanings behind why you're doing what you're doing. Right. And it allows you yeah. to take it more seriously. Yeah. You know, there's life is man. It's hard without a playbook, you know, you know, business is hard without a playbook. It's hard. It's hard to, you know, create your own way and kind of figure it out. And I think spirituality uh, offers that playbook, you know, and, and how to operate in life, you know, how to be a man with strong integrity, you know, how to be someone who's a leader, you know, everything that we go through as men from how we deal with family stuff to how we grow businesses, uh, yeah. the answers can be found in, in the faith, right? It's not just some woo woo stuff that, you know, talks about eternity. It's like, Hey, like while you're here, there's some really valuable tools uh, that will make you a better man. And one of those tools that's mentioned in the Bible is your body, you know, is yeah. your fitness, is your, you know, people can argue till they're blue in the face that, Oh, it doesn't matter if you're in shape. I mean, I beg to differ, man. Like, you know, I think it's been pretty crystal clear that, you know, what you do with your temple, which is your body, uh, which, which is where the Holy Spirit resides if you're a believer of the Christian faith. And, you know, other faiths have similar you know thought process around this that you do need to take care of your health because yeah. it's like when you clean up your diet, we're not just talking about the food you eat. You know, we're talking about the inputs from news, from energy, from gossip and vices and all the other things that comes through intake. Uh, we have to be really careful of that. And when we start cleaning up our nutrition. We start cleaning up our habits. All of a sudden we start to go like, man, I've allowed a lot of negativity into my diet. You know, I don't yeah. need all this crap. It's really clouding my judgment. It's clouding my thought process. Like I can rid myself of that. And all of a sudden you can start to tie back, you know, your healthier habits with fitness to a healthier mental state and how you operate day to day. Yeah. I mean, if the fitness side, it even helps you handle stress a lot mm -hmm. better for you. I mean, were you always in pretty decent shape? Like when did it, when did you really make that shift and decide to yeah, build Yeah, I was born shredded, bro. <laughs> no, I definitely, my journey is a couple phases, right? The first phase was, you know, I was an athlete growing up, but I was never like a physical specimen, right? There was definitely a time where I started working out and uh, my body responded really, really favorably to working out. And looking back, I can see pictures now and it was like, wow, actually I looked all right. You know, like, <laughs> I wasn't I can't, born I can't look that. back at pictures of myself. I was like <laughs> shredded out of my mind. I'm like, man. <laughs> I was definitely never shredded, but I was like, you know, the guy who could add like, you know, like athletic muscle pretty good. Mm -hmm. But the thing is like fitness for me back then had nothing to do with, with aesthetics. I was into sports and played sports 
throughout my high school years and into college too. But working out for me was like a safe place, man. Like um, yeah. it's, it was a place where I felt like really good about myself and I got away from a lot of toxic stuff that was happening at home. And uh, it was able, it was a, a place for me where I was able to feel in control and mm -hmm. what was a very uncontrollable environment in my in my life at the time. So that translated into a love of fitness. And then in my early 20s, uh, when I became a trainer, it was crazy. I became a trainer and then I actually went off the deep end with food. I gained yeah. tons of weight. I was stressed out all the time. I really just didn't have a good footing in life. I had lost my way with my faith as well. I was still in of the faith and I was a believer, but I wasn't involved in church. I wasn't doing all the right things. I got into yeah. a a lot of bad circles. And I gained like 65 pounds. I was 245 at one point. Dang. Big, big boy. I was big boy. And uh, I ended up cutting all that weight over time, but I was overweight for a good chunk of my early 20s, probably about four years. And uh, I had a lot of issues, man. Like I was suicidal, I was depressed, and I just wasn't eating well. I wasn't taking care of myself despite still loving fitness. I just was not the walking, breathing example of fitness. Truth be told, what changed things for me was coaching, man. I, I found coaching. You know, I found people, mentors yeah. who were like, hey, man, like fitness, you kind of got the workout side dialed in, but like the mindset side and the nutrition side, like you have no idea what you're doing. Right. And I was able to lean into them and I fell in love with coaching. I think coaching is like truly the secret to success in so many parts of life. Some people call it different things, mentorship, you know, past yeah, coaching, coaching, mentorship, mastermind, whatever yeah. it is like for it's me. A it's a hundred percent a hack because I can trace back every good that's happened to me to knowledge and proximity. And that proximity and knowledge always came from having a mentor, right? Yeah. And having a coach, somebody who was willing to just put me on game and be like, Hey, this is really, I've spent 10 years figuring out how to do it all the wrong way. And I was fortunate enough to figure out a way that works. Let me just put you on game and save you. <laughs> <laughs> just save you, save you 10 years game. of memory. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when someone tells me, like, I know it's going to sound super arrogant, so I hope it doesn't come across that way. But, you know, when someone's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really just going to try to do it on my own, I'll almost like, laugh. I'm like, Bleh. like, what? Like, what are you talking about, man? Like, even if you don't have all the resources to invest in, like, you know, million dollar coaches or whatever, dude, like go out and find resources online. Like there are people willing to give away the game, like you said, uh, or at least pieces of the puzzle, leave, you know, breadcrumbs for you to yeah. find so many answers that'll save you so much time, man. Get on email lists, like dig into YouTube, like do all these things. Cause man, I tell you, like trying to do anything on my own these days, I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, this is insane. Right. The same way. If I'm like trying to solve a problem, First thing I'm thinking about is who's already solved this damn problem. <laughs> 100%. So I can just talk to them and not have to figure it out. And a lot of people go wrong thinking that they're doing. And I, I really think it's a fallacy. Like they don't really understand like how much more damage they, be, they could be doing trying to figure it out on their own versus actually work with a coach. Right. Yeah. So what led you to work with a coach? And did you try to do it on your own? And then you're like, you know what? Oh, yeah. Dude, I was a self starter, you know, from the time I picked up Arnold's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding when I was 15. You know, I was just a self study. You know, I was learning stuff, you know, trying to figure it out, trying to copy stuff. I had no idea. You know, there wasn't the yeah. internet like it was like there is now. You know, it was books and magazines and stuff. Funny enough, the guy who actually was my first coach who I invested in was a guy named Greg Plitt. He's an OG man. Like, you know, he's, he's actually, uh, deceased unfortunately now he was hit by a train filming a fitness ad which is like the craziest way to go out but really uh, yeah he had a membership yeah. site that's yeah, crazy like just unbelievable he was a, a wild guy super motivating former military guy and he was like the first i think the first fitness guy to really like at least in my opinion talk about the mental side because back then it was like mm -hmm. all bodybuilders you know it was like hey you got to train like a bodybuilder eat like a bodybuilder like live the bodybuilding lifestyle that's like how you get yeah. he was like dude it's not nothing to do with that it's like all about how you respect yourself right it's all about you know what standards do you hold like do you want to be the guy who's like this or do you want to be the guy who holds standards like that and uh it just spoke to me I invested in his program you know it wasn't like one-on-one -on -one coaching it was like group coaching but yeah. uh, i didn't have a lot of money back then so i was like whatever i can afford i'm in and he uh 
he changed my thought process around fitness. I realized, yes, of course, Greg looked like an absolute specimen. I mean, his body was like insane. Still one of the best physiques I've ever seen for sure. But just the way he talked about fitness, I was like, oh man, it's like a tool. You know, fitness yeah. is just like part of being a great person and a great man and has little to do with the abs. Yeah, I want the abs for sure, but I just want to start thinking about fitness differently. And so, yeah, he changed my mindset. Now from there, I started getting addicted <laughs> to hiring coaches. I was like, ooh, what's this guy going to teach me? Ooh, what's yeah. this guy going to teach me? And back then it was the wild, wild west. So, you know, like I got a chance to work with some really cool names in different parts of fitness, you know, for, for very low cost. And so over time, though, I started to gain this love for taking what I learned and helping my clients understand this stuff. And I realized, man, I'm actually good at taking complicated stuff mm -hmm. that I've learned and making it simple. Yeah, And that's like where my coaching business started to take off. It was like, okay, that's a cool concept that I learned, but it's kind of complicated, you know, when it was taught that way. Let me teach it in a way that's like super, super simple. And people can go, oh, I get it. How do we dummy it down so that you can actually use the information, the end results from it? 100%. Yeah. Like, you know, I was a trainer for a while, but then I got out of training because I just honestly, I hated the hours. I was like early morning, late nights. I just left very little time to like get anything done and I just didn't like it. So I got into training on the side. I had a very part-time training business. And then I started working in corporate America. I went back and started uh, selling all sorts of software and stuff like that. And what that taught me was like, wow, you know, when you have all this time dedicated to career, and then you also want to have, you know, a family that you want to build, you know, a business maybe that you're trying to build on the side. Like it's hard to make fitness a priority. So yeah. how do I make fitness accessible to the guy like me, right? Who's got all this stuff going on. That's where my business started to take another level, right? That's where it was like, okay, I want to help guys who, yeah, forget about the guys who want to be bodybuilders. Like, yeah, those, those guys are cool. They've got all right? the time in the world to figure it out. They they're young bucks, three, right? Three yeah. hours training and, yeah, you know, like it. even if they're not doing it with good form, like just a sheer <laughs> volume of training, like they're going to get results. Of course, they can't help yeah. it, right? But I want to help the professional guy like me, you know, back then I was like, dude, how do I, how do I make this something that I can do and still handle life, right? He'll still do the things that I find to be the, the important, the pillars, right? Uh, and that's where true transformation was born because there was just, at, at the time at least, there was just so much nonsense out there, you know, like so many myths. I mean, even back then it was like eat every two hours, you know. Yeah, six um, minute you know, abs. And yeah, don't <laughs> eat after eight o'clock. Like as soon as eight o'clock strikes, like you're going to lose, you know, you're going to store body fat. I was like, what? Like it just, to me, it just, I didn't know any better. So I was unlearning a lot of things that I had learned. And then teaching it to other people. It was awesome. It was like back then it was like, wow, this is so cool. There's all this new new information coming out and just got to be a part of that first like big wave yeah. of online fitness. And then, um, you know, it's been a 10 year you know, journey since that point. So your program or your system is called like the 3M system. Can you break that down? What is the 3M sure. system and like yeah. how do you go about developing it. Yeah. The 3M system was a product of all the crazy information out there. I mean, and not just crazy in the sense of like, wow, that's extreme, but like just the sheer volume of information, all the diets, all the workout programs, like do this kind of cardio, do that kind of cardio. Like how do you even understand where to start? And so for me, once again, I was like, I have to break this down in simple to understand terms. So what I basically decided to teach people is that every diet, every workout, every possible fitness program out there follows three key principles, movement, muscle, and meals. At the end of the day, movement, I like that. You, you have to move more. Yeah. You know, whether that's doing your cardio, walking, you know, there's many different ways to get movement done, but in order to be healthy and burn calories and just be a person who, you know, feels good, you can't be sedentary. So you have to yeah. have a movement strategy. Muscle, everybody needs to train to strengthen their body. Everybody. Doesn't mean you're going to blow up. Doesn't mean you're going to be jacked, all that stuff. Like that's something that requires more attention to detail. But if you're just like, hey, I want to feel good, look good, you know, wake up every day and get out of bed without a whole lot of pain, then you do need to have some strength training in your routine. That's the muscle side. Mm -hmm. And then of course, meals. Every diet out there really does three things. It helps you control your calories. It helps you eat more protein. And then it helps you clean up some of the junk in your diet, right? Or eliminate some of the junk in your diet. Every diet follows those same exact principles. Yeah. Every single one, right? And so you, you know the rules of the way, game. It's like, yeah, 100%.
Right. <laughs> I mean, there's, you can do the test. Like that. I, I always tell people, if you don't believe me, pull up any diet, like let's break it down. You know, like, okay, well that diet tells me to cut out my carbs. Yep. What else does it tell you to do? Lower my calories, cut out the junk, eat more protein. Look at the meals, right? That it suggests you eat. It's always the same thing. So yeah. when you know the rules of the game, well, then you can play the game really well. Right. And you can, you can almost build your own game, which is the whole idea behind the system is like, let's take that system and let's create something that's built for you to where you have all the buckets filled, but you do it on your terms. So that you do it in a way that you can sustain, you enjoy it. And of course you get results. Like that's ultimately what people are after. Yeah. But you can't just follow some plan blindly because you saw, you know, before and after and they're like, oh, that person did two workouts a day and they cut out all their carbs. Like that must be it. Well, yeah, maybe they did that, but can you do that? And if the answer is, no, nah, I can't see myself doing that longer than like 30 days. Well, okay. Then it's probably not the best diet because you're going to need more than 30 days. You know, you're yeah. going to need a lifetime of fitness to be healthy. So, so your process, you're essentially figuring out what lifestyle the, the, the guys that you work with have. What are like their real constraint? So mm. instead of trying to force them to fit a diet, you're essentially figuring out what, based on like what you've got going on, how do we adapt the system and build out a protocol that you can actually follow? Like you're integrating it into their current lifestyle, not the other way around. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, I mean, the first thing is I, I tell guys like, hey, we're going to have to really shift how we think about fitness, right? It's, you know, it doesn't have to be this ball and chain that like takes away from your life, right? We want to start thinking about all the things that you do that are non-negotiable, right? Like meetings, you know, practices with your kids, date night with date nights with your wife and start to understand that you can still do all of that. Yeah. Like fitness doesn't require you to take away things from your life. It just requires sometimes a shift in what the habit looks like, some of the details of the habit. And then of course, you know, starting to realize you don't need to do as much as you probably think, right? A lot of guys are like, yeah, I got to train every day or I got to train five days a week. And I said, let's cut that in half. You know, I'm going to prove to you that you can train two or three days a week and get phenomenal results, right? Assuming that you have the other building blocks in place, like movement, for example. You know, they're like, yeah, but I got to go to my kids' practices. I don't have time to work out. I'm like, what do you do with their practice? I, you know, I sit there and I watch them practice. I said, do walk, walk around the field while you watch yeah. them. And like, you know, s s freaking pace back and forth. Like you don't have to leave them, you know, but you can move, you know, while you're doing that, you can move while you take meetings. You know, if you have a meeting at work that you don't have to be sitting at a desk, you know, even if you are sitting at a desk with someone else, go for a walk meet, you know, like take a stroll around the office. You know, there's so many things you can do. It has to, you have to have an open mind here though, and be willing to do it. The meal stuff is like, Hey, I can teach you how to eat at restaurants and still get in shape. Well, you have to make slightly better choices. Yeah. You probably have to say no to the cheesecake. Like every, you know, every time you go out, yeah. you know, but sometimes you can say yes to the cheesecake or you can say, yes to dessert or drinks or whatever just has to be at the right you know frequency but i always start guys by saying like what parts of your life are non-negotiable what are you never going to give up right like and they might say something like you know two glass of wine on a friday night with my wife okay cool then that's part of your plan you know birthday cake with my kids on their birthdays great that's part of your plan like no worries right you know vacations i want to eat whatever i want awesome no worries like that's totally fine right yeah. and all of a sudden it's like don't really have to give up that much. It's just a couple tweaks and a little bit more awareness around things that are holding them back. And then all of a sudden it's off to the races. Yeah. So essentially it's figuring out a way that figuring out what your non-negotiables are going to be, right? What do you want to do? What's your lifestyle constraints? And then what are the adjustments that needs to be made to actually get you, allow you to, to do it long-term, right? Because for you, I know one of the things that you talk about is not with the exception, let's say you have like a photo shoot, whatever it is that like you're going to probably do a few like short term things just to kind of get lean and yeah and, and look good for it. But like for the most part, you're all about sustainability and thinking about long term, doing things for the long term and like how are you going to still be able to do this and maintain the results that you get for not just like 30 days, but like a year, two years, three years, 10 years and be happy with the progress that you're making over an extended period of time. 100%, right? man. 100%. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, my question to guys is like, when are you going to be okay with like, let's assume you get in, in good shape. Like, are you going to be cool with just going right back to what you were before? Like, is there, do you know a time frame in your mind where you're just like totally cool with being unhealthy and out of shape? The answer is typically no. Like I don't have a thought like that, right? Like, yeah, it's like never. I want to be. Yeah. I, I mean, well ideally I want to be in shape for life. You know, yeah. but there's also, you know, an understanding that there's different chapters in life, you know, so I want to help guys understand that like, Hey, yeah, there might be a time and place to get just super ripped. Like, dude, let's just get down to like, you know, no 
total body fat. And that takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more attention to detail, but it's not necessarily a forever thing. But it also doesn't mean that's, you know, right after that, you're going to go back to eating whatever you want. It might yeah. say like, hey, let's shift our targets. Let's go after a performance goal. Uh, let's learn how to maintain. Like, what can I get away with? You know, what can I eat? What can I not eat? You know, what, what parameters do I need to have during a maintenance phase? You know, um, what are, you know, what are my standards too? Like, what am I, what am I not willing to allow my body to turn into, right? Like what, what yeah. weight do I, do I want to say, Hey, enough is enough. You know, just changing the standards for who we are and how we treat ourselves, man, it's huge. You know, and I think that comes down to having self-respect, you know, Hey, you know, it's not necessarily about all the people telling me how great of, you know, physique I have, or like, you know, I'm not saying that sucks. Like I don't mind it. Right. But at the end of the day, when I walk around and I feel like, Hey, I got to live in this body. Like, what are my standards for that? You know, yeah. am I going to disrespect it or am I going to say, Hey, no, I, I want to feel good. Like, for myself, first and foremost, which is totally cool. That's a good thing. We got to change the standard that we hold. And it can start right now. Like, you know, people who are like, eh, it's going to take forever. Like, no, it just because the physical result might take longer than the mental result. The mental result can start right now. Like, hey, dude, I have a standard. It's just this is what I do, you know, and that that's yeah, something that I think start that mentally happens. transforming how you operate. And if you can essentially change your mentality is like your internal operating system is what yeah. we'll call it with like our team internal is like, this is our operating system. Like you can change the standards that you live by. You can change the core values that you believe. And just by doing that, you start increasing your operating system and that affects how you do everything else. Right. Correct. So they can start feeling the effects of those internal shifts long before physically it starts like reflecting. Mm. All right. And people want like that short term gain. But if you can maintain it, I'd rather be able to like lose weight slowly, but then lose it forever versus like going through that yo-yo where it's like you do a crash diet. Yeah. Right. And then you gain it back and then you do another crash diet. It's one, it's not good for you mentally. And two, it's not good for you emotionally. And, and, and you're just not as sharp and you're not as confident as you're walking around. 100%, man. Yeah. It's, and it's not good for you physically either, right? Like, you know, putting your body through, you know, the ups and downs of a yo yo approach, man, like it can lend itself to some really poor health outcomes, you know, like the fat gain that you always, you know, add to your, to your body, right? Like that's a permanent thing, you know, like, People don't realize when you add fat, the fat cell itself never actually goes away. It's there forever. It shrinks and the fat inside of the cell gets utilized, right? When you lose fat. But if you're constantly adding more fat, losing it, adding more fat, it becomes easier to add fat when you have all these cells, right? That are waiting. So I strongly encourage guys like, hey, you know, if it's a matter of like doing an extreme diet and then gaining it back, I'd say be less extreme. And maybe, yeah, maybe it is a slower process, like you said, but it's sustainable. And it's something yeah. where you're like, okay, my 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 bumper lanes are tighter now. Right. Like I don't allow myself to swing that too, you know, too far to the one side of the pendulum. You know, I'm, I'm more middle ground. Now, yes, I may not also extreme, you know, flip to the extreme shredded side, you know, that I once chased, but I'm lean, I'm healthy, I'm fit and I'm not overweight and unhealthy. And that's, that's a big shift mentally, right? It doesn't have to be this whole black or white thing. It's like sometimes the gray area is a good thing for fitness. You yeah. know, um, and having like a, like balance in terms of where you want to be. I know sure. for me, like, I know sometimes I'll struggle with like body dysmorphia because <laughs> sure. I've been on that extreme and I'm like, man, <laughs> people are like, bro, you're in great shape now. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what great even is. Yeah. I'm That's like, I, I mean, mean, like, I look, I look terrible. I'm so. <laughs> dude, the body dysmorphia thing is a real thing. I think a lot it of guys really are is. to admit that, you know, we all struggle with that, man. Especially, you know, if like I've, I look at pictures and, you know, once a year I really put the blinders on and I'm like, get in great shape. And not to say I'm out of shape ever. It's just, you know, I'm going to like go into the photo shoot extreme shape and you see the pictures and it's like, wow, like that, that's fun. But, what I've learned to to do with that is that's just one of many adventures that I do in my body, right? What what has allowed me to kind of relieve myself of the, some of the body dysmorphia because man, I suffered from it for a long time. The first time I ever saw my abs, I did a bodybuilding show and I was like six percent body fat. I mean, so shredded that it's like, oh my gosh, right? Like you yeah. see pictures and you're like, I'm so fat now, <laughs> right? But it's like I still see abs. Like, what am I talking about, right? Yeah. But it's just I have to learn that there's different chapters to the story. 
You know, it's like, um, like I love different shows, different movies, you know, and uh, like I love Game of Thrones. Like it's just one of the coolest shows ever. And, you know, every season's different, you know, like season one's different than season two, season three. So like there's always things that you can have on your radar to make you feel good about yourself. It doesn't always have to be chasing body fat percentage. It doesn't always have to be chasing a physique look. It could be like, Hey, I want to like go run a marathon or like, Hey, I want to like just learn how to run period. It could be a high rocks. It could be a deck of like all these fitness races out there. It could be anything that requires some discipline around your health that you can hang your hat on and say like, well, this season of life, I did this. And that was awesome. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm like aesthetically the number one physique I've ever had, but I, I can like always that. go and back to that. Chapter. You're making it fun, but then you're yeah. giving yourself something different to focus on and, and kind of keeping it exciting. Right? 100%. So you kind of think about like using the sports analogy, you know, there's a different season every year and each season brings like different challenges and different schemes and different things, obstacles. And, but that's how you get excited, right? It's like, you're, you're yeah. looking forward to the season. Season. So thinking yeah. through what season you're in, right, and really focusing on like, or right, what is the goal, my goal for this season that I'm in right now, right? And then yep. kind of orientating yourself towards that. I like that frame a lot because then it kind of gives you a target to be focusing towards when it comes to like your your body and your your physical health. Like, all right, what am I what am I aiming for in this season? You know, what yeah, I, I mean, because dude, like, I just I think one thing that guys are afraid to admit, you know, especially those guys who have obtained some semblance of like elite, you know, physical transformation or like, you know, aesthetic goal. The truth is it kind of gets old. Like, you know, it's like chasing abs all the time. It's like, eh, okay, cool. Like I got there, you know, it's like guys who win the Super Bowl. I and mean, by the way, I'm not comparing <laughs> abs to winning the Super Bowl, but like, you know, you win the Super Bowl, they wake up the next day and they're like, you know, because you get there and you're like, man, I work so hard for this. And the adrenaline dump afterwards is like, so I tell guys, man, rotate your goals, you know, rotate yeah. your targets, you know, you're not stuck in the box of just trying to look good naked. Yeah, looking good naked is also subjective. Have some dang respect for yourself, first of all. You know, don't allow yourself to get, you know, crazy overweight and bloated and all this stuff. Like, you know, take care of yourself from a health standpoint. That doesn't mean you're going to be 7% body fat, though. That might mean you're okay with 14% body fat, 15% body fat, but still a body that can go out and do things. Yeah. You know, work out. Kind of being intuitive with it where. Yeah. Like for me, that's something I have to kind of do as well, where I'm like, well, how do I actually feel, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel stronger than I've ever been. And I like the silhouette of my... <laughs> my <laughs> Oh, man. Let's cut that part out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a new program, the silhouette. Right. The male silhouette. <laughs> I can already see it now, man. It's gonna be but great. um but it's like one of those things I'm like, you know what? Actually, I prefer the way that I there's lots of things that I prefer overarching the way that I'm uh, that my physique looks now than I did when I was just like completely shredded. Sure. But I like that, like ultimately thinking through one, the season that you're in, but then focusing on like, all right, where are you at? What's realistic? What do you actually want? And mm. what's it going to take to maintain it? And then having, enjoying the seasons that you're in and, and having like different targets for what you're trying to do to keep things exciting. Because once you're like at a certain level, it's very easy to maintain. Sure. All right. And so it's very easy to maintain. It can kind of get boring and redundant. So that's something that just from this conversation, I'm like, I need to be implementing, thinking through yeah. our, what is a physique season that I'm in and what do I, what am I working towards? Because I am definitely yeah. in like that maintenance, maintenance mode. Yeah. yeah. And, and man, like, that's the thing too. Like, there's nothing wrong with maintenance. I tell guys all the time, like, I know maintenance sounds boring, but like, there's actually some real major protocols that, you know, need to be in place during maintenance season. You know, you still need to have some non-negotiables uh, on your schedule. You know, you still need to have some, you know, challenge yourself with some bookends around like, what am I not okay with? And what am I, you know, also not going to allow myself to dive into with extremes, you know, don't get sucked into, you know, diving into another phase when you're in a maintenance phase. Maintenance right. is like where most guys should be. I think most of the time, not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say 80 or 90% of the time, but I think half the 
year at least should be in maintenance because listen, we got a lot going on. Like, yeah. you know, I can't always be training for, you know, photo shoots. I can't always be training. I mean, I could, but then I'm going to be sacrificing, you know, mental energy that I want to spend on other things. So, yeah. you know, that makes sense. I think everybody needs to build out, you know, the, their story and their adventures that they want to have with fitness. Uh, we help guys do that. You know, you come in, obviously you got to get in shape first. You got to get healthy, right? You got to get your body to a place where it's capable of more. Get the building blocks down, the, the foundation down. But then like, man, let's open it up. There's a lot of things you can do. You know, I have guys doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Once they get the body, then it's like, how do you want to use the body? And then learn how to maintain, man. That's a skill that most guys have never acquired because they're like, they're either in I don't care mode, eat whatever I want, do whatever I want too busy to care about anything else or they're in like extreme i gotta like lose this gotta get ripped gotta like count every calorie right they never find that healthy balance man so yeah. we want to help do that that's awesome so how do guys get in touch with you so we're kind of coming up on time here yeah for sure man what's the best um, way for the people who are listening do you only work with men or do you have any protocols we have some female entrepreneurs sure. that listen to the show as well so yeah so i i personally only work with men we do have a female company um called transform her we haven't really brought it uh to to the mainstream yet but we do have a group of i shouldn't say we haven't brought the mainstream we have like eight thousand women in a group that uh support each other that's a free group for the ladies out there who are like hey i want to you know have have some guidance on that typically you know the the men that i work with are guys that are high performers fathers you know men who have a a sense of faith in their life you know they have mm -hmm. a value system but they're like dude my body's just out of alignment with yeah you know, with the, the integrity that i hold in other parts of my life and they want to look good naked too man like real talk they're like dude like, they don't want to have it all they yeah screw screw you know being politically correct like i want to like <laughs> look good Dude. like cool like let's do it right so we get the honesty and the you know transparency out there let's let's rock and roll if you want to find me you know i have a podcast too it's called the true transformation podcast you can also check out my website the true you can find me on social media at josiah fitness on pretty much every single platform instagram we're big facebook we're big twitter or x or whatever they call it and then youtube man my youtube is huge uh it's it's we drop three videos a week so you can go there search josiah novak or true transform and you'll find my page and uh we drop in three epic videos a week so that's probably a good place to start man i'll uh i'll link everything in the show notes for you guys who are listening who want to tap in with josiah and just kind of for sure tap into his world consume some info from him uh we'll have everything in the show notes for you to be able to go through josiah i mean was there if you were to kind of think through the last year you know what is like a quote that mm -hmm. you would say has really kind of stood out to you that you think is worth sharing I have a quote that I'm going to share that you actually gave me. If it's not, if you're not going to share that. <laughs> I know I'm exactly the message. quote. I'm going to let you live. And I'm going to let you take that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, nah, dude, that, please. That's yours, man. That's a gift from, I. Had, that was inspired by a friend of mine that uh, said something kind of similar, but then I was like, hold on, that's something more to that. But I, that's all you, man. My quote that I live by and um, I think is always the one I, I lean on because it, it really exemplifies everything that I, I stand for. And that is life moves fast, make it count. There's so much meaning behind that. I won't spend too much time. I'll get off my soapbox on it. But you know, if you're a man of faith, man, there's like so much behind that because life does move fast. And I, and I believe that it, this truly is a dress rehearsal for eternity. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into this life though, because we're trying to build for the, for eternity. We're also trying to influence and we're trying to be, you know, powerful men in a good way. Yeah. And this life is going to go by in a blink. So don't waste it being out of shape, overweight, feeling terrible about yourself. Take the power back, use your body for good and be the leader in your space that you were called to be, man, because life moves fast. Go make it count. That's that's really my my quote that I live by. I love it. The quote that I was a uh that I stole from uh, Josiah. I mean, I quote you whenever I share it now because it's, <laughs> I heard it from you. So well, that's humbling. <laughs> you said a quiet life, but a loud impact. Right. And I yeah. really think that kind of embodies a lot of the guys that you're, that you're working with. You know, they want to have a loud impact, but they want to live a quiet life. They want to take care of the family. They want to be around for those that they love and they want to show up for those that they care about. So I just think it's really, really cool, but we're going to have everything in the show notes for people to be able to tap in with you. Dude, it was great having you. Uh, if you haven't, if you're an entrepreneur and you're finding that, hey, you're doing well in business, you're leveraging 
different things with uh, your life and business and make it easier for you to win, but you haven't been able to figure out how to win with your health, you got to tap in with Josiah, especially if you're a man, a man of faith who's purpose driven, who wants to live a life of impact and mm -hmm. wants their body to reflect the success that they have. Tap in with them. For the women who are listening, we're not leaving you out. We'll probably, if Josiah gives me the link to the group for yeah. the women, we'll probably link it somewhere in the show notes for you to tap in to his community as well. But it was great having you on, man. Any question that I didn't ask that you think is worth asking that you want to, that you want to bring up? Uh, the only thing I would say is where should people start when it comes to taking care of their health? I have a morning movement protocol. I think mm -hmm. everybody should start their day, you know, in prayer, in meditation, and you know, all the things that go into your spiritual health for sure. But you can do that while you walk. So yeah. go for a walk, tap into, you know, your your God. I personally, you know, for me it's Christianity. You know, I'd spend some time in prayer, some thought. I might go for a run. I might work out morning muscle, you know, gets thrown in there. But man, for those out there who are attacking their day, start on the right foot, man. Go do your stuff in the morning before life gets crazy. And I promise you the rest of your day will fall into the, the alignment that you're looking for. So that's where me, people should start. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. We're going to include everything that we t talked about in the show notes so you can tap in. But guys, thank you for tuning in. Till next time, go ahead and stay calm change lives and have business on your terms. Mm -hmm.